Hello and welcome back. If you're a subscriber, I love you. Thanks for coming back. And if you're new, think about subscribing so I can love you too. I'm John Stark from MacTheMovieGuy.com and this is my review of The Handmaid's Tale, Season 5, Episode 1. Yep, we're back. Uh, against all odds, I did read the book, so I'm actually kind of amazed at how far we've made it. Since uh, the actual end of The Handmaid's Tale book, the world that they've been able to create is kind of astounding. I'm a blind film critic, so um, I can't tell you what Fred's body looks like. <laughs> Sounded gnarly, though, didn't it? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I watched the show with audio description, which Hulu was kind enough to provide. This is one of those shows where they consistently provide it, at least, so... There's something. Thank you, Hulu, for your audio description on Handmaid's Tale. I'll try to be nice to them for once. Um, yeah, so Handmaid's Tale is back. And yes, I'm going to recap it because I am a big fan of Handmaid's Tale. I'm a big fan of the work that Elizabeth Moss has been doing in the show. And actually, really the whole cast... Um, I think Anne Dowd, what she does as Aunt Lydia in this show, is just tremendous. Uh, sometimes crafting a great villain really uh, just takes a lot of craftsmanship um, to create really a standout like Aunt Lydia. But uh, this, uh, this is sort of anticlimactic because this is a series, uh, season opener... That feels like a series finale. <laughs> it's very odd. Um, it almost worked. It would have been... It works in the way that, like, the True Blood series finale worked, where it, it wouldn't necessarily make people happy. But, like, it could work if that's what you wanted to do in life and then walk away. <laughs> it didn't really feel like a season premiere in the way traditional season premieres do, where they're like, okay, this is what we're doing this season. Um, this one was kind of like, well, we're going to wrap up what happened last season, and, uh, yeah, we're good. Thanks. Thanks for coming. Um, <laughs> so June was dealing with, uh, you know, ready to accept her, whatever, the ramifications of killing Fred, uh, and, uh, she did that whole kissing the baby while covered in blood thing and then leaving the house and we got to see that again with more where Luke like screaming after her and they were like what's wrong talk, talk to us what are you doing <laughs> she just like leaves anyway she's like ah, right. um and uh she goes and she talks to Nick and then she ends up like turning herself in and the cops are like they're like, they're like listening to her. Oh, she eats some pancakes. I forgot that. And uh, that was kind of a funny scene for me because um, without having facial recognition, this is one of those blind things. This is a blind moment for me. And also the fact that we wait so long for seasons sometimes um, that legitimately uh, when she went into the, the, uh, the diner and sat down and she sat down next to those two girls... And they, I was like, am I supposed to remember who Danielle is? Which one is Danielle? I felt so unprepared. <laughs> I was like, I don't know you. Am I supposed to? What did you do last season? Like, I legit could not remember Danielle. There was no facial recognition. They were just like, June sits down with Danielle. And I can't remember the other girls. And... It's not Emily, but uh, something like that. It, it, I was like, who are these people? I just thought maybe they were just part of the random girls from last season. I, 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 don't, I don't know. I don't know if they're... Have, have, have they always been there? Am I just that crazy? Because um, I legit... If they really are truly just like you know, recurring supporting players that just kind of pass through some episodes. Like, there's some characters on The Walking Dead that I don't always remember their names either. You know, like, on other shows that I watch where I'm like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's right. That character had a name. Um, <laughs> so, maybe that's that. 
uh, maybe it's sort of like that, but I, I, I didn't remember, and I was, I felt so bad as a fan, because I've seen every episode, and, uh, uh, I knew all the other players, though, so, um, when she got out of the diner scene with the two that I couldn't remember, um, yeah, and then she goes and turns herself in, and I love that, that, that Canon is just like, well, the crown has no quarrels with you, so we're gonna have to have you pay a fine. <laughs> it was like eighty dollars, <laughs> something like that. Is a really low amount for a uh, illegal transport or something like that. Of because she sent the finger to Serena. It was so great. Um, like the cost of a a friend's life because he was killed in a no man's life. It was like eight dollars. <laughs> um, it was great. Uh, it was also nice to see, at the end of the episode, the guy that's been trying to negotiate with Serena, uh, who keeps giving her the time of day and treating her like she's a normal fucking person, um, instead of just, like, slapping her all the time, which is what I would probably be doing every time she tried to make a request. I'd be like, no. Because <laughs> I could, I just would never be able to get out of my mind all the stuff that the people in Gilead do to everybody else. And she's like, I demand that he be buried back at home. I'm going to make it happen. I would have, just, I would have picked up an object in the room and just hit her with it. I would like, do you not understand that your husband, like, rapes people? Like, do you, what kind of honor funeral do you think this guy is going to get? No, we're going to fucking burn his corpse. <laughs> He does not get a burial. We are not shipping him home. You do not get to take him home. Oh, God. Anyway, um, but that's just, as a fan, seeing everything that Fred did, I do deserve to die. Um, and Serena deserves to be locked up in jail exactly where she is. I just, I hate whenever she has, like, a demand. Like, she's like, I have demands. And I'm like, no one cares. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> um, she's like the least sympathetic character on the show. I just, do, I don't care. I don't care what Serena wants. I don't care. I, I just want her to just sit in a jail cell for the remainder of the show and be like, yep, we got her. We locked her away. Now we got to lock the rest of them away. Now we got to defeat Gilead for good. Like, stop giving her things that she wants. Um, it's just not... I mean, you can be kind to a prisoner. That's fine. But... You know, when she starts making, uh, like, unruly demands, like, trying to take her husband's body home for burial, it's like, no, no, you, you stay here. You here now. <laughs> anyway, um, but, uh, that's, she's always, uh, she's always had, had been a, a great performance. Great, like I said, create, crafting a great villain takes a lot of talent, too. You have to really be able to hate the person, you know? <laughs> Um, but I was, uh, I thought it was really nice when that guy shows up at June's, uh, June's house at the end of the episode. It was just kind of like, yeah, oh, fuck that guy. Good job. <laughs> that was nice. Um, it was a good episode, but it didn't really light a fire in me for, like, this season. I wasn't really like, what are we doing this season? I don't know. This is a weird season opener. Because <laughs> it kind of felt like we wrapped everything up. June got, June killed Fred, Serena's in jail, I realize Lydia's still down there and Gilead hasn't been defeated yet, but, uh, as far as, like, wrapping up June's storyline, you almost did that, like, she's, I mean, her daughter's down there, but she also doesn't know how to get to her daughter, because they moved her daughter out to, like, Colorado or something like that, and she's, like, nowhere near there, she can't, she cannot walk to where her daughter is. <laughs> so without the help of a plane <laughs> or a train or something, she's not going to get there. Um, it's not as convenient as just like walking over the border. So, uh, yeah, it's um, definitely, definitely an interesting series. I'm really happy to have it back. I can't wait to see the people in Gilead. It's so timely this series to see what's happening. Um, uh, I'm so glad it's back that we can have this conversation about Handmaid's Tale um, and just how uh, how horrible uh, that 
the world is. Like, why would anybody want to live in that world? You know? Um, and people like Serena, the, the women who, who dream of it and help to shape it are kind of the worst of them. Like the Serena's and the Lydia's. Well, for the men, it's, it feels like it's easy because they're just like, yeah, of course we want to be in a world where we're on top. I mean, <laughs> duh. <laughs> but, but for the women who help make it happen, it's like, why? Like, what's going on? Like, what are you doing? So at the end, I feel like they're almost the ultimate villain. Like, I, I feel like I, helped, I, I hated Serena more than I did Fred, even though Fred was the one that was actually doing the terrible shit. You know, because she helped, she stood by him and helped him create this world. Um, it's just so bizarre. Anyway, that's my long ass take on The Handmaid's Tale. <laughs> Definitely read the book. If you've never read The Handmaid's Tale as a book, I highly recommend it. Um, the audio description for this series is great. Uh, my only problem was just there was too long of a gap between season four and season five, and I just forgot minor characters. I'm sure Daniel's been in the show before. I'm sure Daniel wasn't just a random character that just showed up to eat some pancakes. Um, I'm just making a joke. Like, I, I realized she had to have been in another episode. I just didn't remember what her purpose was. So, um, anyway. She's probably been in, like, a hundred episodes. I have no idea. But, without facial recognition, just saying that Danielle was at the table, I was like, I don't remember you. I'm sorry. Um... Yeah, uh, I'm not going to start Handmaid's Tale off strong with that A like I do a lot of other series because I was a little disappointed that this one didn't set the ball rolling. It could have. It could have done what it did and then also set the ball rolling. This one kind of just sits in and lets June sort of absorb, which is fine. But for a season premiere, it's weird. It's weird to do that in a season premiere. <laughs> um, usually you want to let people know what's coming and this one didn't do that so um i'm gonna give the handmaid's tale season five episode one an a minus i thought it was great i just would have loved a glimpse of where we're headed anyway um i know we dropped two episodes at the same time i do these one a week i watch tv like a normal person back in the day like an old like an old fart um but <laughs> that's because there's so many damn tv shows and I also review movies, and I just cannot sit down and watch, binge watch, 10 hours of a TV show, you know, and then uh, 10 hours of the next TV show, and then 10 hours of the next TV show, and then throw in movies and everything. So I just spread them out. Sometimes I'm a little bit behind. I'm obviously going to always be a week behind on The Handmaid's Tale now. Thanks, Hulu. <laughs> Um, but that's it. So hopefully you'll stick with me and, uh, we'll talk about Handmaid's Tale. Let me know what you think in the comments. And as always, you can visit my website, MacTheMovieGuy.com for more reviews. Uh, you can go to the audio description project, adp.acb.org, um, for and more titles that have audio description and where you can watch them. And then, uh, the adna.org, uh, is a great place to find out who's narrating what else they've narrated uh, it's like imdb for narrators so go give them a support and a shout out and uh fuck gilead and fuck aunt lydia and i can't wait man i hope june at the end of this just is like yeah uh i hope i hope i have lots of hopes for the final two seasons of this show anyway uh we'll get there so Thanks for checking it out. I gotta go review something else and I will see you on the other side.